News, Views, Voices of the Global Indian Community, India Abroad. I am Deepak Prash, for those of uh, you who have not met, I am the co-founder of Impact. Thank you so much for joining us today for this fourth summit. And we will have uh, another day tomorrow and a gala and so on and so forth. So welcome, welcome, welcome. But it is really my true privilege and my honor to introduce a very special guest to you. She is the first woman to be elected vice president. Of these great United States. But not only is she the first woman, she is the first South Asian Indian American woman. to be elected to be the Vice President of United States of America. She has been an incredible role model, I think, for all of us. Uh, what she has done is she has paved the way for women, for immigrants and minorities, and is a true hero and an inspiration for all of us. I think she, her success, what she has achieved, gives us the hope and the confidence that we have a bright future, all of us together, fighting for public office and as a community. So I think it is just a proud, proud moment for us. She has done an amazing job, as you, most of you know, uh, in uh, reproductive rights for women, uh, protect voting rights, ensure gun control, and working with the president, a more prosperous nation. They have created many, many new jobs, and I think the number is like two million new businesses, which is an all-time record. On a more personal note, uh, she actually, she and I had breakfast must be eight years ago, and that is when we discussed launching Impact, and she has been an incredible guiding force for this organization over the duration. She came to the first summit in 2018 mm -hmm. and you know here she is again so please put your hands together and welcome the vice president Woo! of the united states to run for office, those who have run for office, those who are in elected office. When I think about the work that has happened because of impact, where there's been about voter education, mobilization, um, what that has meant in terms of turning a state like the state of Georgia, where now in the United States Senate, there is representing the state of Georgia, an African American and a Jewish American. <laughs> in large part because of Indian Americans and Asian Americans doing the work that was done in the state of Georgia to ensure that people saw a sense of connection between themselves and the outcome of that election. It really is extraordinary. So I wanted to stop by to, one, thank, of course, the organization for everything and for all that it represents, but also 
to say, especially to those who have run for office or aspire to run for office, that you must run. And you must know that you are not alone. There is so much that we still have to do as a country. And a lot of the work that we each do, which is why we are here together, is born out of a belief in the promise of America. And dare I say that I am empirical evidence of the promise of America. As many of you know, my mother arrived in the United States at the age of 19 by herself. Traveling from India before, this was in the late 1950s, before a transcontinental flight was anything in the norm. And my grandfather, who was one of my most favorite people in the world, in fact, we were pen pals forever. We did, for, so this is gonna be maybe generationally. Does anybody remember those, those um, the stationery, the blue stationery with yeah. the stripes, yeah. right? <laughs> And we would send letters back and forth when we didn't go, when I didn't see him. And my grandfather, um, when my mother secretly, as it turns out, applied to UC Berkeley because she oh, wanted to study it. science, go Bears, <laughs> my grandfather said to his eldest child, who was also a daughter, you go. And my mother then arrived in the United States and being who she was, you know, all of five feet tall, she said she was 5'1". If you ever met her, you would have thought she was 10 feet tall. But being who she was and coming from where she did and coming from a place where she was taught the importance of, of democracy, she was taught the importance of independence, she was taught the importance of fighting against corruption, she was taught the importance of being involved and being engaged, she was taught the importance of, of what governments can do both for the benefit of the people but in a way that could hurt the people if everyone doesn't participate. All of that, because of what she understood as an Indian woman, the daughter of an independence movement, and what it means to be involved. My mother, then immediately when she arrived, in Berkeley, California, in the Bay Area, in her sorry, went to go march for civil rights. Right? In her sorry. Many of you have heard the story. We would go back every two years, pretty much, to India. Usually, sometime between October and December, to you know avoid monsoon season, and, and that's when we had our, our Christmas break. And. Um, I, as the eldest grandchild, had the honor and distinction within our family of being the only one my grandfather would take with him on his morning walks after he was retired with his retired buddies. You know, you know old Indian men, you know, just taking their walks in the morning. <laughs> we all know that our grandfathers, right? And so every morning, he and his buddies would take a walk, and, and I was the only one in the family that he would allow to come on the walk. And I remember as a young girl, Hearing them debate the importance of democracy. Hearing them discuss the importance of standing for what is right and fairness, for equality, for freedom. And so all of that brings me to why I know from, the, from my heritage and from the earliest days of my life when I was aware of such topics as democracy, why this organization is so important and why the people who are here are so important to all that we know to be the promise of America. This election coming up in six months, I think is presenting a question to each of us, which is what kind of world do we want to live in and what kind of country do we want to live in? And one of the ways that we answer that question is to seek office and to participate in elections knowing that the outcome of those elections matter in fundamental ways. Elections matter. And so I will offer Ben, 
let me then offer just a bit of advice for those who are thinking about running for office. Can I see a show of hands who's thinking about running for office, who's in the process of running for office, who wants to run for office one day? Okay, so there are a number of people. Okay. You know, the, over the years, we've had so much more participation by Indian Americans in the electoral Ooh. process running for office. Ooh. But the numbers are still not reflective of the size of the growing population. And therefore, what will happen invariably, it's happened to all of us, is you are gonna find yourself invariably in rooms where you are the only one who looks like you. The only one who has had your life experience. And what I then say to you each Look around this room and hold on to this image. And remember then, when you walk into those rooms, when you walk into those situations, you remember you are not alone, we are all there with you. You must remember that. And remember then, the responsibility that you carry, dare I say the duty. Many of us were raised with a sense of duty. The duty that you then have to speak with the voice that is the voice of the people who are so proud of you that you are in that room and expect that you will use the full force of your voice to express what you know to be right, to express what you know must change. It is so important. When we think about the decisions that get made in those rooms, the best decisions are made when all of the viewpoints and all perspectives can contribute to the outcome. And that's why it's so important that everyone is here, both if you are running for office, but also in the work that you and we are each doing in terms of reminding community, family, friends of their importance and their power, and their power. And the last point I'll make is this. There's a duality to the nature of democracy. On the one hand, it's incredibly strong. There's an incredible strength about democracy when it is intact. What it does for its people, the protection of individual rights and liberty, much less dignity, very strong. On the other hand, very fragile. It is only as strong as our willingness to fight for it. And if anyone is associated with impact, we know we're prepared to fight. We like a good fight, and when we fight, we win. Thank you all.